I now, give, I give workshops to the FBI examiners. These people, by the way, these people have taught at the FBI uh, Academy in Quantico, and they've taught at the Department of Defense. My question would be, they've taken the test from the best. Why would you expect them now to go back and take an FBI test? The tension might be that the questions were, were pretty soft. I mean, if the FBI were to give did the you test, you would did you I don't think so. Listen, what's what next? What's next? A bed of coals? No, you want us to walk across? It's on videotape. It is, you know, let's they can the, review this. Let's take the They'd question like. or the statement. These questions are soft. What would you ask? Well, I don't, I'm not an FBI expert. Right, but, but what would you ask? Um, I, I think you ask the same question in a couple of, couple of different ways. I'm Three saying, different times in one test. There would be more in-depth questions, harder questions. What's the bottom I'm line here? The bottom line is... Did you inflict the injuries that caused the death of John Bonet? The bottom line is, do you know who killed John Bonet? The bottom line for Patsy is, because she was not excluded by handwriting analysis, did she write the ransom note? Now, once you've gotten that far on single-issue tests, which have the greatest validity of any type of examination, why are you continuing? Where are you going? Well, Mr. Baxter will speak to that. Go ahead, please. Yeah. <clears throat> One of the things we depend on very much in the zone comparison test is a person to focus. It's, a, it's the prioritizing of the mind to focus their psychological set either on character evaluation questions that we call comparison questions or the did you questions. Now, the worst thing you can do is to put a secondary involvement question in that test series because they may not feel comfortable with that secondary involvement question and that will kill the responses to the comparison questions which we depend upon to get our numerical scores. It would be the worst kind of test going. Sir, does the FBI submit questions prior to the polygraph as well? Submit to whom? Well, uh, 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 they're, they're reviewed very carefully ahead of time. What we're no. talking about is the questions are submitted at the time of the examination prior to instrumentation. Not that they're given the questions a week ahead of time. At the time the examination is conducted, all of the questions are reviewed. And if you recall earlier, I said the reason for that is that so they can focus on that which poses the greatest threat to their immediate well-being. And that's how the FBI would conduct the examination. The sessions were videotaped? Yes. Or audio. Lynn, yeah. is there any possibility that that would be released to the public? I, I know we have videotape on some. I'm not sure all were videotaped in Atlanta. They the, were all audio taped. They were all audio taped, and the videotapes were done on the examinations conducted in Los Angeles because I had that equipment for the examinations there. You had a question? exactly does the test measure? Does it measure respiration? Does it measure uh, sweat, breathing? It measures a number of physiological changes, such as the changes in the rate and volume of breathing, the changes in electrical conductivity, the changes in blood pressure and what pulse rate, mean? What does that mean? How, how the body impedes current. The galvanic skin response. Known as galvanic skin response. And all of these various things that we measure are indices of stress. How long were these tests for the Ramses? Hours. Each hours. one was a couple of hours at least, some two to three hours. Did you ask questions? How many questions were asked all together? You know, I don't think you understand, as I did not understand, how a polygraph examination works. I mean, I thought, like probably a lot of you thought, that they bring you into a room, they sit you down, they hook you up to all this paraphernalia, and then they say, you know, are you sitting down? Are you standing up? Are you Patsy Ramsey? Are you, you know? The, the question, I mean, this is real layman's terms, but you spend a large amount of time in basically an interrogation kind of situation. Then you're hooked up for 
you know, a series of yes, no questions. My, uh, this, this is, uh, we, we, I'm insulting the guy. It that you went through this process. <laughs> And we call it pre-test I mean, interview, not interrogation. Okay, well, anyway, <laughs> take it from me. Yeah, I call it an interrogation. Yeah, and then afterwards, they interrogate question again some more, you know. So it's not just, I mean, if it were just this little five to ten minute yes, no thing, it wouldn't take very long, you know. But part of the whole process, and there again, this is very lay terminology, is to, you know, get you to kind of, think about what it is that, that you're going to be tested about. One of the so. reasons that polygraph works is what we call the conditioned response theory. The theory that most of you are familiar with is the fear of detection of deception. But polygraph works because of what we call the conditioned response theory. Did you strike the blows that caused the death of so-and-so? When you're asked that question and you did not do it, you have no recall of that event and you